So that being the case then, I have I have part of my house here. This is a bedroom. Over here, this is my circuit box. And so I want to have this group of uh, outlets from the bedroom all in one circuit and, uh, uh, and, and feeding to the box. So how would I do that? Um, this group, oops, so this group here is called outlets for bedroom one and what I will do is I'm going to make uh, I'm going to uh, edit the group. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this group and then I will draw my lines. And you know what I think I'll do is actually I'm going to draw a line, draw a line, stop, highlight those two lines and I'm going to make them a group. So this is going to be a subgroup that I'm going to call wiring bedroom one like that. And I'll put it in a layer. The layer I'm putting it in is is going to be circuits. So this group is in circuits which is in whatever group these things are in uh, or rather whatever group the, the uh, 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 bedroom one outlets uh, are in, which I think is, uh, is the, the floor plan group. Okay, so now I can take this group here I'm going to edit it and this group has these two lines in it and I'm going to move this line over and have it match up with this outlet. Yeah, let's get rid of that line. Well, let's just redraw it, I guess. Okay, so we've got one there. From here, through the wall, up and then across to the final outlet which is over here. There, we'll extend it that far goes around, comes around up to here, and then it does need to go through here and over to my box. So I'll use my line tool, find the end of that line, bring it up to this part of the wall here, bring it over to there, and to the box. Okay, so now I have these lines, then I'll go and take my my tool here. Whoops, it apparently doesn't work unless I close the group first. There, okay, so I want this line to be what? 0 0.5, 0 0.25? I'm going to call it 0 0.5. 0 0.5, continuous, sure, color, yellow, dark green, Alice blue. Man, there are a lot of colors. Azure, that sounds good. Let's try that. All right, I don't like that color. Let's try a different color. Now well, I've used dark green elsewhere. I don't even know what some of these colors are. I mean, bisque, what color is that? P, 
pale goldenrod, pale green, pale this, papaya whip, peach puff. Who comes up with these names? Plum. I like that. All right. So I'm going to group, uh, take this group. I'm going to change change the color of those lines in this circuit to plum. Now, what's interesting is this. I'm not actually editing this group. I'm outside of this group. And yet, I still somehow managed to change, or rather add, uh, these line rectangles on top of, or rather within the uh, group that I'm working in. So, you see, it's still inside there. If I go to my outliner, these are all still within the Outlets Bedroom 1 group. If I were to highlight all those, right-click, I can make a group there, rename it. What was I going to call it again? Wiring. Wiring VR1. There. So now this is a group. I'll put it in circuits. So now I have this one wire, wiring here that goes all the way around and comes into the box for the first bedroom. And that group is part of the overall outlets group for bedroom one and represents one circuit. And I've done the same thing with the kitchen. Making a you know, kitchen. I have a bedroom group here that also encompasses a, a set of lines, a living room circuit. Um, I should do bedroom two and some of these bathrooms as well. And in addition, I have special cases like this. This is a this is a 220 outlet here that is uh, uh, for an electric electric range and that's the red wire and this red wire goes all the way around then comes back out over here it's a single circuit with the uh, dedicated to the single 220 outlet. Let's say that I wanted to establish some conventions here. For instance all the Okay, 240 outlet. All the 120 outlets are going to have solid lines. All the 240 outlets are going to have some other kind of line. A, a dashed line, a dash dot line, center. I like that. I'll use that. This is going to be, was it red? It was red. All right. So, using that convention then, Edit the group. Come on. Oh, right. This one, oven wiring. I'll delete those. That's right. So I would redraw my lines here. There. Come on. To there. Over to there. Like that. Pull up my definition. There. There. there, there, to indicate that whatever whatever line this circuit is, it's a it's a 240 volt line. How does it show up in the outliner? Well, it shows up here, see? Styled line 0 0.5 center red as opposed to Here we go, styled line continuous plum. Continuous 
indicates uh, 120 volt. Okay. Center indicates 240. Something like that, or you know, some other kind of kind of uh, electrical wiring gauge definition that we could use use for that. So that's how it's done. That looked a lot easier than trying to uh, uh, trying to place, um, you know, individual components and rotate them and rescale them and stuff. Instead, you draw the line, and then after the fact, you can uh, uh, replace the line with, um, you know, with a, a special line definition rectangle, uh, and you can even even have it dotted or uh, you know long and short dashes or whatever in order to indicate different uh, 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 different types of wiring that you're going to be using. So that's a very flexible way of doing it and there's also the there's the additional uh, fact that this does tell me the length 4 foot 7 and 5 sixteenths inches, 11 feet, 4 feet and so on. It tells me the lengths here and that means if I export this to a spreadsheet I can have the spreadsheet uh, extract these lengths and tally them up for me so that I can um, uh, 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 automatically uh, get a subtotal of the length of the wiring that's used in this particular circuit. That might be helpful for some of you later on.